is a 1980 comedy directed by Anne Bancroft and starring Dom DeLuise, Anne Bancroft, Ron Carey, Candace Azera, and Estelle Reiner. The film opens with a freeze frame of breastfeeding. We then learn that Dom's life growing up was eating and getting piss in his face. Shouldn't you finish cleaning him up before giving him something to eat? Dom's cousin was overweight and dropped dead at a young age, leading his aunt to freak out the funeral, followed by Dom's sister, Antoinette. <laughs> God damn, is this whole film just shots of Dom DeLuise eating? <laughs> no more eggplant parmesan <laughs> Goodbye, my little <laughs> Take me with you, Sally no. boy! No. Take me with you! <laughs> this segment of the film makes me feel like I'm at an actual funeral. <laughs> well, the first 15 minutes have been depressing as shit. Great comedy so far. What do you say to a mother who buries a child? I almost said, where's Sal? Oh, God. See? Then Dom mansplains to his brother, Junior, how to eat properly, to which he flips out on Dom. Here. I told you I don't want that much bread. Don't you understand? I've been telling you that for a hundred years. You love bread. I don't love bread. I like bread. Then Dom finishes his breakfast. Man, for a minute there, I thought they were going to show Dom DeLuise eat that dog. We're then treated to a walking to work and eating montage, where he sees Lydia, but chooses to press his mouth against Oscar Meyer instead. Who the hell waits for the card shop to open? I miss your warmth. I miss your grace. I miss your laugh. I miss your face. Happy birthday, son. Across the world. There's so much fucking crying in this thing, I had to make sure it wasn't written by Nicholas Sparks. There's more food in this shop than greeting cards. Dom proves to his sister that he's fine, then goes in a vapor lock, agreeing to go see a diet doctor. So he brings a shitload of food to his appointment! With the diet doctor! Was this scale bit old in 1980? Because it's so old and forgotten now. Probably because we've gone digital. Fuck analog. Thanks. This film has more piss in it than Donald Trump's vlog of his trip to Moscow. Do not eat canned fruits. Do not eat dried fruits. Do not eat noodles. Do not eat spaghetti or macaroni of any kind. Do not eat pizza. I'm fucking out. Tom starts his diet eating chicken and kale while making lasagna for his brother. That's a ton of lasagna for one guy. Want some bread? I should change your mind. That's how you say, fuck your bread, without saying, fuck your bread. The next day, Dom watches people eat as he picks up his nephew's birthday cake. Oh, that was stupid. Oh, God, look at that cake violence! And Lydia stops into the store looking for wrapping paper for her shop. I'm afraid it's a little too gay. Wow! 
Oh, it's too shiny. Too, too gauche. Oh, gosh. Too shiny, too gauche. At this point is where you tell her to get the hell out of your store. I know exactly what you want. I have the best stuff in the back. I got it. Why are you keeping the good stuff in the back? I thought the whole point of having a store was to sell shit. Dom and Lydia talk about their family health histories, and then there's this lingering silence that lasts way too long. We jumped to Dom delivering the paper to Lydia's store. Uh, this is an old bottle for Poland water. I'm Polish. Uh, those are two early American cocks, and, uh... Ha <laughs> ha They discuss genealogy, and then he fucking leaves. He heads to a chubby checker meeting. Okay. And then he goes home to lock down the kitchen, giving his brother a phone number to call if he needs help. Give me those keys or I'll blow your nose right off your face. What? Holy shit! This is what domestic violence calls are made of. Junior calls Chubby Checkers for help and apparently they got dressed for when they arrive. Dom breaks down in the midst of eating a pizza after not being able to ask Lydia out. Did this pizza consumption happen before or after the Chubby Checker meeting? So either you did it before went to the meeting, and now you're freaking out. Or, you went to the meeting, and it didn't fucking take! Then they have an in-depth, too-long discussion about food, because, hey, they're fat guys. Then this happens! <laughs> and frenzied eating ensues. So since these guys crack, does that mean Dom gets his money back? Because when you think about it, it's kind of like your sponsor shooting heroin with you. That morning, Dom is having a food hangover, and Junior loses his shit. Yeah, 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 there's two boxes of soda crackers. And what makes you think there's even one drop, one drop of honey left? You want to know why I found the empty jar of honey? Hanging upside down on the statue of our Lord Jesus Christ Almighty. That's a miracle! Then Antoinette brings Lydia to the house with Dom crying yet again and asking Lydia to the neighborhood bazaar. He wins a bunch of prizes, they dance, and share a bra. Then they go to a museum and we get a kissing montage because that's the only way you can express love on film. It turns out Dom lost weight anyway and plans on proposing to Lydia that night. He can't get a hold of her and gets worried, leading to his family having him go pick up their Chinese order which is probably going to be a horrible fucking idea. And he eats the food on his way back, hiding the evidence outside like he's hiding a dead hooker. Antoinette realizes what happens and goes upstairs to calmly discuss it. $40 in Chinese? I feel pretty bad right now. There's even more crying and Dom ends up asking his family one thing. If, if, if I end up a fatso the rest of my life, you guys have got to love me the way I am. Finally, this film says something decent. Lydia calls and it turns out she had an emergency with her brother in Boston and wants Dom to come be with her. He proposes, and you have to wonder if they're going to steal that baby. This was Anne Bancroft's first full-length feature, and you can tell because there's a lot of first-time mistakes that are all over this film. The pacing is way off, and scenes are just plopped one on top of another. Shots that may seem inventive on paper really don't do a good job at interpreting what you're trying to say. The script doesn't help any of this because it's a thinly threaded mess. 
there's no real payoff with anything. The Diet Doctor, Chubby Checkers, two pieces of the plot that were really built up, but then quickly deflated and unused. The cast is great, but once again, you can only do so much with what you're given. That's so is a film that is having an identity crisis. Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? The film doesn't really know, and both pieces just delude each other till what you're left with is just kind of a boring mess. The good people are the fat people, <laughs> and the fat people die young.